Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing, how to generate passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds. And speaking of high, of high yield, how does 60% yield sound? Pretty incredible, right? So this is the approximate yield that has been estimated for a brand new uh, options-based income ETF called QQQY, the NASDAQ 100 Enhanced Option Income ETF from Defiance ETFs. And by the way, they also have one for the S&P 500, JEPY. I'm gonna focus a little bit more on QQQY in this video. So when you think of the NASDAQ 100 with covered calls or enhanced income, right away you think of QYLD or JEPQ. With the S&P 500, you think of JEPI, of course, XYLD, SPYI, Devo, there's a bunch of them. But they all give approximately you know, 10, 11, 12% yield, nowhere near 60% yield. So how does a NASDAQ 100 options or enhanced income ETF that use options gives an estimated 60% yield. How is this possible? Where it turns out these are extremely innovative options ETFs that use daily options, not monthly options like the other ones. So I'm very excited to do a quick uh, review of these two ETFs together. And then I'm very excited to introduce to the channel Sylvia Jablonski, the CEO and CIO of Defiance ETF. She's taken some time out of her day to speak with me where I'm going to ask her all kinds of questions. We'll discuss how the heck they're doing 60% yield or potentially doing 60% yield on the NASDAQ 100. So we'll go through all the questions with her and figure out what these ETFs are all about because I'm really excited. They could be literally game-changing ETFs for us income investors. So let's get to it right away. All right, everyone, super quick. Let's go through these uh, very quickly here because I really want to spend the most time speaking with Sylvia about these ETFs. So here it is. Here is QQQY, the NASDAQ 100 Enhanced in Option Income ETF, and then they have JEPI, which pretty much does the same thing, but on the S&P 500. So we'll focus on the QQQY here. So if you scroll down, you'll see what this ETF is all about here. It's the first put right ETF. So it looks like it's not calls, it's put options instead, but using daily options to seek enhanced income for investors and it's going to be paid monthly so monthly distribution so what is the objective of this etf it aims to achieve consistent and outsized monthly yield distribution so outsized meaning humongous for investors coupled with equity market exposure to the nasdaq 100 so it's going to have you basically like investing in the nasdaq 100 here that is the underlying that is the exposure we're getting it's an actively managed uh, ETF that seeks enhanced income, right? Constructed of treasuries and NASDAQ 100 index options. So this right off the bat is telling me that it's not actually going to hold the index. It's probably the NASDAQ 100 index. So it's not going to hold like a QQQ or anything like that. It's going to hold probably treasuries and cash, uh, which is going to be the collateral to write the option. So it'll probably even make a little bit more yield uh, by holding the treasuries. Kind of reminds me of what YieldMax is doing. Uh, the yield max etfs and it turns out that the options manager for the yield max etfs jay from zega is also managing the options for these defiance etfs already a good sign because i really like jay really cool guy has been on the channel twice hopefully more so the fund uses daily options to realize rapid time decay by selling in the money puts with odte i'm assuming that is you know the the place where they trade daily options so Daily options is actually fairly new. I think they only started coming out in 2022. We'll talk to Sylvia about that. So the fund's primary objective is to seek current income. That's always what I want to see as an income investor. It just means that is the priority. Secondary objective is to seek exposure to the performance of the NASDAQ 100. So this is, it, it's like pretty much owning the NASDAQ 100 index with the income enhancing um, solution that they're doing with those options. So ETF is brand new, just came out in September uh, the 14th here. Uh, very, very new, 12, already over $12 million in it. That, that's pretty good for a brand new ETF. And the expense ratio is actually the same exact one as the yield max ETFs, 0.99 MER, which I find for an actively managed fund that are doing daily options is pretty good because remember, it takes more work to do Z, these ETFs, right? So if you scroll down, you look at the holdings, there's just three holdings. Most of it or over 100% of it right now is in cash and other. I'm assuming the other are the treasuries here, just like the yield max, right? You're going to get about 5% yield on this cash. And these are going to, this cash is going to be used to settle the options. And here are the options. You see the, the put option right here on the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100. So these are the options here. And this is cash. 
right? So very, very simple to understand, except it's using puts instead of calls. Distributions, well, the first one has not come out yet, but you have the distribution calendar here. Remember, this ETF came out in mid-September, so I'm assuming whatever the September dividend is gonna be, it's probably gonna be about half of what it probably normally is. So uh, JEPI, by the way, is the exact same thing, but it's on the S&P 500. Notice JEPI with a Y, right? So obviously they are going after JEPI, the biggest and most popular covered call ETF of all time on the American stock market from JP Morgan, which is, you know, I had him on the channel, I had the main portfolio manager, uh, almost, I think past 30 billion now in assets. So they're definitely going after JEPI with this one. So if you open the prospectus real quick, you could see right here that Zega is the sub advisor. So my assumption is that they're going to be doing all the options. And I did speak to Jay about this. It is indeed the case. So why invest in QQQY? Well, this fund seeks to generate monthly income, which is not dependent on the, on the price appreciation of the index, just like every other covered call strategies, right? That the, the um, what it really is dependent on is the options and the volatility of the options. The fund seeks to participate in a portion of the potential gains uh, experienced by increases in the value of the index. So this is the exact same thing as a covered call strategy. You're going to participate in a portion of the upside, but not all of the upside when the NASDAQ 100 goes down, uh, sorry, goes up rather. So uh, let's see, All, although the fund will not fully participate in the gains, the fund's portfolio is really designed to generate income, right? So it's not designed to follow uh, one for one what the NASDAQ 100 does, it's really to generate income from those options from the NASDAQ, right? So, you know, the, the wordage here looks exactly to me like a covered call strategy, everyone. The fund strategy will cap its potential gains if the index increases in value. The fund strategy is subject to all the losses if the index lo loses value, which may not be offset by the income received by the fund. So, you know, exact same verbiage and, and, and definition here of what a covered call strategy is. You have the, um, the, uh, the details on the options and it looks like they're doing daily or even monthly, sorry, weekly put options. And eventually, and pretty much the goal is to generate about 0.25% yield every single day. So there's about 250 trading days in a year. If we do 250 times 0.25, you get about just a little over 60% yield. So that is the goal or that is how they're generating that yield, everyone. So super, super interesting. And, you know, let's just compare it real quick. And what I've been noticing, I've been watching it in my, my stock app. I have QQQ, JEPQ, QQQY, and QILD all one after another, and I have the last five days here. And you could see that QQQY pretty much follows what the NASDAQ 100 does, guys. Very similar. So QQQ, which is just the pure NASDAQ 100 growth fund, right, in the last five days, minus 2.62. JEPQ in the last five days, minus 2.48. Makes sense. It's going to be down a bit less because that covered call income helps to offset the losses. QQQY down 1.93. And then you have QYLD, which is gonna be down the least because it's the most aggressive with the covered calls, down 1.47. So just to show you, you know, the CTF's only been out for a few weeks, but I'm just trying to show you here that it pretty much will do uh, daily what the NASDAQ 100 does. So you really are investing in the price movement of the NASDAQ 100 with QQQY and the S&P 500 with JEPI with a Y, JEPI with a Y, but you're getting that massive yield because they're selling those daily uh, put options, which is trying to generate 0.25% yield. So enough of me talking now. This is just a quick, quick, super quick overview. Let's talk, about, let's talk to Sylvia all about this ETF here. She's been kind enough to uh, come on the channel. She's been interviewed on CNBC, but let's let's get into it with her right now. And ask her some detailed questions about these amazing game-changing ETFs. All right, everyone, I have the special pleasure of introducing to the channel Sylvia Jablonski, CEO and CIO of Defiance ETFs. By the way, Sylvia, I have to say, amazing name for ETF company, Defiance ETFs. I absolutely love that. Thanks so much for doing this. We're going to talk about the new um, ETFs that you guys have launched, QQQY and JEPI, JEPI with a Y. How are you doing, Sylvia? I'm doing great. And uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me. And if you're curious about the name, um, watch the movie Defiance or Google Defiance and what it's about. The uh, grandson of the subject at hand is, is the, the founder and the brander of, of the Defiance name. So it's super special and super cool. 
That is cool. I will definitely check it out. Yeah. Um, so today, yeah, as you probably already know, my, my channel, my platform is all about income oriented investing. And you guys have a couple of thematic ETFs, but we're really going to focus on these two new launches, which really have my attention. I have to say, I'm very, very excited. I think these are game changers. They're very innovative. We'll talk all about these, uh, you know, QQQY and Jeppy with the Y. So let's just start with, give me a bit of the premise or of the objective of why you guys launched the, these two ETF, these income oriented options based ETFs. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, and, and you know this because I've seen you talk about this, but there are very popular um, income enhancer types of ETF products out there and they go about it in different ways. The most popular way that, you know, you see these ETFs um, utilizing options to generate premiums through the use of covered calls. So yeah. what we did and what we thought about um, with with our, you know, sub-advisor and trader, uh, Jay from Zega, is that you can turn this whole thing upside down and inside out. And instead of using covered calls, if you used in the money, slightly in the money or at the money puts, then, you know, there is essentially a, a way to generate outsized income. So um, what we what we also realized is that instead of holding, you know, or having exposure to an index like S&P 500 or NASDAQ um, as the base of the fund, you could actually invest in cash and short term treasuries and start in this higher income environment of 5% just from, you know, the cash in the treasury equivalents and things like that. And on a daily basis, utilize the put right strategy to generate income, enhanced income. So that's why we did it. We just thought that we could take a, a stab at outperforming these awesome products that are already out there and do it a, a little bit differently. Yeah. Okay. So this is really an income oriented uh, yes. pro the products. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll focus maybe on QQQY, but you know, Jeppia, it uses the same strategy just on the yeah. S&P 500 instead of the NASDAQ. So I was going to ask you about it later, but we'll, we'll just clear it up right now. So Jay Petricelli, who is is the sub advisor. He's the one who's handling the options from Zega and they do all the options on the yield max ETFs as well. Right. So he's the guy. Exactly. Doing the options. Yeah. Add him exactly. on the channel. Yeah. He's, he's the, he's the expert in, in the options world. He's the, uh, you know, he, he's, he's our, our, our self trader here behind the strategy. So I mean, it, I talked to him a few times. Again. This guy knows everything there is to know, about, everything options. There is to know about options. Best teacher yeah. on the planet. Yeah, very transparent, very honest. Uh, I, I really, really like him. So yeah, I, I, I right away, I think that's a positive where you have someone like that actually managing your 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 options in these two ETFs. So let, let's try to break down a little bit. You know, I've seen your interview on um, CNBC or MSNBC. And, you know, the guy was asking you about it and, and it was going really fast. We'll try to slow it down and break it down in case people you know they a lot of people know what cover call strategies are, but maybe the puts or a little bit more uh, complicated to understand, but actually not really. So let's start with what you said about the underlying, what does e this ETF actually hold? So kind of like, it reminds you of the yield max ETFs. They don't hold the underlying, they're holding them synthetically. How are you guys getting uh, exposure to the NASDAQ index without actually holding the NASDAQ index? Cause I saw from the holdings, it's pretty much all cash and treasuries, right? So how does that yeah, work? So Exactly. So it's cash and treasuries, and then we're essentially short a put on the underlying index, and that is collateralized with the cash and treasuries. So, you know, there's no sort of, um, it, it's not a naked put. We're not, um, you know, kind of using derivatives or leverage or, or anything beyond that or anything that is unsettled, I should say. So we're using index options that essentially settle the same day. So we enter into a trade um, at the close, and then at that point, you have, it's called zero DTE. So there are mm -hmm. zero until X free. So within 24 hours, that put is going to cash settle. So um, it's it's as simple as that. No, you know, again, no leverage, nothing, not, nothing funky, just cash treasuries and, and short to put. Okay. Yeah. Pretty simple. So basically you have exposure to the underlying index without actually holding it. You hold mostly cash and treasuries. That's the assets that are going to settle these options. And you're actually getting a little bit of yield because treasuries give about 5%. So this is actually a bit of extra yield on top of the options income, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, what what is, you know, obviously really cool about some of the products that are out there <laughs> is that they do generate enhanced income, but they're starting with a baseline of the S&P 500 dividend, right? In our case, yeah. we're using cash and treasuries, so you get that 5% automatically on the cash and treasuries, which which, you know, just at baseline there because the risk and the payout structure of of a in the money, you know, selling in the money put put right strategy and the covered call strategy are, are super similar. Um, you know, you can compare them in that way and see the difference, you know, between the S&P dividend and just the cash of the treasuries in our account. Yeah. Yeah. OK, makes yeah. sense. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, cover, the, not, not the cover cost strategy. I, I'm so used to saying that the option <laughs> strategy. So these are daily 
in the money puts. So, yeah. you know, from reading the prospectus, I see a lot of the same language relating to a covered call ETF where you're you're limiting your upside uh, for those big pre premiums. These are daily. So would you say an in the money put is kind of like an out of the money call? Is that like an easier way to explain yeah. it to somebody who's, you know, more used to the covered call strategy? Would that be accurate or? How, yeah, would that. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. So that's a that's a very accurate way to look at it, um, particularly okay. in terms of the risk profile. So yes, the upside is capped and limited. Like we're super clear about that. And you know the difference is that the covered call strategies are monthly, so they kind of have this you know kind of like one shot to generate the premium. Yeah. And the difference here is you know where this could potentially perform, potentially perform better is you know you have a daily bite at the apple. So each day you're resetting, and you have this chance to capture this premium through the put right strategy. So it's on a daily basis you can generate income. And, you know, we sort of feel that over time, if you kind of like back test it and look at it, having a shot at this 30 times a month or, you know, however many business days are in a month, actually it's not 30. Um, it's, it, it works out better than, you know, kind of that one shot of cover pop, but exactly the, the right way to look at it in terms of, you know, what it's producing and how it's kind of working for income. Okay, cool. I, I was very surprised when I saw daily. I didn't even know daily existed. Obviously, I know monthly exists, uh, but these are daily options that expire daily. I mean, I mean, are these new? Are these relatively new to the market? These daily they options, are. or yeah, okay, they, when they, did they are. Come out? When did yeah, they? Yes, so it, it's been you know a little more than a year, really. Um, and you know the the volume on these is just is just you know exponentially blowing up over the last couple of the months. The average was like. Uh, 500 billion and now, you know, Siebel put out a note that it's about a trillion, but they, um, the, the main, you know, zero DTE options that exist and that we use are really representing only three indices and it's spot, you know, S&P 500, which is Jeppy, um, JPY, and then uh, NASDAQ, which is QQQY. And then there's one other one that we, you know, filed for, we haven't launched it yet, but it's, it's on, um, on the Russell. So these are the only, you know, indices that you can do this product on right now. Uh, so it's very much, you know, first mover, innovative, something new but you know as you know you're in this space like people have been so excited about you know zero dte options just in terms of um you know kind of just day trading and retail and things like that i mean it's really exploded over the last couple of months but you're right it's, it's only been around for for a year or so wow who's actually buying these daily options is it mostly institutions or re retail investors do you think yeah I, you know i i think it's I, I, I was sort of surprised by this because I thought it was just retail. You know, there's there's certainly a lot of um, talk and discussion in different retail trading communities about it. And oftentimes it's the retail crowd that talks to us about this as well. But, you know, there are a lot of institutions out there that are that are thinking about it in a way of, well, you know, it's a good way to get NASDAQ exposure. And, you know, if you think the NASDAQ is kind of going to be, you know, if you kind of have a, a, a bullish view or at least like a, a stable view that it's going to maintain with, with you know, little gyrations, I mean, you can really kind of protect your exposure and generate the income there. So it's a, it's a really interesting strategy. And we actually see a lot of institutions picking it up as well, taking a lot of calls from family offices and RAs in the last couple of days. I, I could only imagine for sure. Yeah. Very, very, very innovative. And by the way, I love in the interview, the guy, the guy was that was interviewing you, you know, the, with a nice head of hair that I'm that I'm very jealous of, was, ta <laughs> was talking to you about active traders and this and that. And then the first thing you said, which caught my attention, which I'm like, yeah, for sure. This is actually pretty boring. I love when you said yeah, that because it is. It's not yeah. like it's a it's a super risky. I mean, to me, it, it has the same risk profile as, you know, an out of the money call or covered call ETF. Am I right in saying that? I mean, it, it's pretty boring, right? This is not, correct me if I'm wrong here, it's not for someone to get in and out of. This is really to buy and hold long term for long term investors, income investors, right? Exactly right. And, and it's really funny to see some of the commentary out there about this. You know, there are a lot of um, kind of groups of, of people and, and media and things like that that understand this. And then there are other groups that, that seem to be kind of convinced that it's a naked put, you know, which it isn't, um, that the put is backed by cash and, you know, collateralized by cash and treasuries. Uh, and then the second, you know, risk that I've seen people kind of um, misunderstanding is that we are going to be put the stock, right? These are index options. They expire to cash. They're cash settled at X yeah. race. No, there is no, you know, kind of putting of stock on this. So, you know, the risk is the risk of, of you know, the, the downward movement of the underlying index, but um, the same as a covered call strategy, right? And, and the upside is essentially gathering that daily premium. And, and hopefully if the, you know, if the index cooperates too, you can capture some upside performance there. And, you know, it's capped, but to your point, um, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll give Jay full credit for this. When, when we first talked about this, he said, mm -hmm. you know, you could very, you could very easily run this in a retirement account. Like that's yeah. how kind of 
slow and sleepy it is, right? It's like cash, treasury, selling, covered puts. You, you know, th there's no major, um, you know, risk again outside of perhaps the underlying path of the underlying index. Yeah, yeah. So very similar risk profile to covered call ETFs. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, in my community, to be honest with you, it's a lot of people who are retired and want that income. Those are typically the people yeah. who go for these the covered call ETFs. So this is pretty much the same risk profile. It's just a bit more innovative, and you're doing it with in the money puts instead of out of the money calls, which is kind of you know almost the same thing. So. Um, so yeah, we talked a lot about the the risk profile. I was gonna ask you, you know, how does it compare to Jeppy and Jeb Q from JP Morgan? I had him on the channel, Hamilton. Very nice yeah. guy, very, very big and popular, right? We're talking like 30 yeah. billion in Jeppy. Jeb Q is quickly gaining on QILD. You know, so maybe I could ask you this way. Why not the calls? Why the puts instead of the calls? Is it just more volume on the puts? Is it because of it's the back testing you did? I'm just curious. Yeah, so I mean, their their products are are you know phenomenal, phenomenal success, and you know same with some of the, the other cover call strategies out there. You know, we we nod to them, um, but through them we learn that there's a way to turn it inside out, and um, you know, so sort of why? What's the difference? You know, the difference. The first difference is again, you're starting in that higher income environment by holding the short term treasuries that are yielding five percent. So right there, you have you know kind of this 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 fruitful income that will come in. And then on top of that, the difference is, you know, we're using a, a, a daily put right strategy. So if you can capture, uh, say, 25 basis points of time decay on a daily basis, you know, that yield um, is, is about 60% per year. Now, of course, you know, that yield could be higher if we capture some, you know, just straight upside of NASDAQ, right? That would be great. Um, or it could be lower, right? If you have kind of a down, downward trend in the underlying index. But um if you know all things are equal and we're capturing that you know daily income versus a one time shot at a monthly payment yeah you, you have a shot of just generating a little more income um with a similar risk profile so that's really the difference and it's just a way you know there's so many ETFs out there that that are phenomenal ideas and then a light switch goes off and there's a way to kind of like innovate it and tweak it to think about how can you get a little more juice out of it and that's our goal to to get a little more juice out of it a little bit more income. I think that's pretty modest when you say that because you said 60% yeah. yield and I, you did yeah. say that uh, with the MSNBC guys. I think that's incredible. <laughs> and right away, you're going to have naysayers. You're going to say, oh, it, it's not possible. But what you're, you know, the, the math behind it is like you just said, you're trying to generate 25 basis points every trading day, which is 0.25% yield in about 250 days. If you just do 0.25 times 250, you, it, it's like 62 and a half. And then right. there's that 5% from the treasury. So 60% is actually a pretty decent, um, you know, estimate, yeah, right? It, it is. And, and when, you know, when they put out their estimates, they'll kind of look at like, what is the monthly, you know, time decay that they can generate? And they'll come up with an estimation and that estimation might be like 15 or 20%, right? And so if, and so, you know, if we kind of have a stable market where there are minimal moves in the underlying index and, you know, historically, believe it or not, although, you know, these days the market is kind of whipping around on us because we don't like what the Fed is saying or we're worried about yeah. whatever what it might be like right now, the market's whipping around a little bit. But historically, you know, the market actually is more stable than people think it is. Volatility environment has been fairly low for a long time. Um, you know, we're, we're hopefully coming out of this race debacle, even if it's not, you know, how we want to hear it or what we want to hear. There's reason to believe that, you know, if if the, Na if the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 hold up and they're trading within a range, we don't have any kind of like nuclear drawdown, you can get that 60%. Where you don't get it is if the index crashes. And, and then you also, by the way, won't get it in the covered call strategy either. You'll have the same risk as it's the same, um, yeah. an equity holder. Yeah, maybe you'll have a little less like Friday, right? So Friday... I want to say this last Friday, NASDAQ was down about 1.7% and our ETF was down 1.4%. And that's because that little bit of premium that we captured that day cushioned the fall, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can't predict, but like in a fairly stable, you know, low volatile, 1% up and down where we capture that 25 bips of time decay, you can get 60%. So yeah. um, no, I mean, that's, that's what we're aiming for. That's what we hope for. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. Just quick question. Um, yes. So it's 60%, that's on the NASDAQ one. What about Jeppy? I'm assuming it's maybe a bit less because volatility is a bit less on that. Or would you say it's approximately the same or? Yeah, it, it, you know, it could be it, it could be approximately the same because you're still shooting for that 25 basis points of time. Okay, you're still shooting for no matter which one, yeah. whether it's going to be the, no the matter which one. Okay, 
Yeah. Yeah. But again, like I definitely want to clarify our, you know, very much like our vision goal, you know, back test of looking at that time decay is, and, and to your point, like the math is not even right. It's actually 67%. We're saying 60, right? So we're even like downgrading what we've seen, but um, you know, if, if we go into a recession and the market pull back, that, that won't be the result. Right. Um, we're talking about, you know, again, if the market is, if we re remain in the type of market that we've had over the last year or so with, you know, reasonable levels of volatility, kind of short up and down moves overall, you know, kind of bullish direction for the market. I mean, it's, it's going to look very good. And, and, you know, there's, there's a chance of getting that full time decay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It, it's similar risk profile to basically holding the a QQQ or a, yeah. or, or a spy. I mean, I, I, am, I put him in my stock app. I like to see the comparison. So I put, you know, spy, and then I put um, spy I, JP with an I, then JP with a Y, and it they pretty much all move in tandem. And like you said, yeah. I mean, when the indexes go down, same thing for the NASDAQ, by the way, I put QQQ, QILD, JPQ, and QQQY. And I've noticed they behave exactly like covered call ETFs. If the market goes down, you're going to go down with it, but not as much because that premium helps cushion the fall. And then the, 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 what you're giving up is some potential upside, but these are in the money put. So you're still getting some, you're getting the income just like equity. the yield max ones, you're getting some upside, which is, yeah. I think, very, very key and very interesting. And you know, personally, I prefer it more, for example, than the QILD, which gives up all the upside. So, right, right. And I think, yeah, and I think like a great point too is that, um, you know, you know, the upside is kept, but yeah, then you're, you're really, you're really, gen you know, you can really generate that additional income, even yeah. in a scenario where the upside is, is capped on these. So, you know, that's, what's a little bit different. And then because we're doing it on a daily basis, like when you pl plug in those other ETFs, the risk profile is the same, but the only difference is we have 30 tries to get income. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, if yeah. this is you're only giving up the upside of the day. Yes, you're capping exactly. it of the day, whereas everyone else is doing we reset 30 every days. Day. So yeah. the risk is much higher of missing more upside if you're doing 30 days instead of one day. So very, it is. Yeah, very, you in. yeah, very interesting, very, very innovative. I mean, I, I could talk to you all day about this stuff. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you guys seem to have found a very innovative um, solution. Do you have an approximate date for the, the, the Russell 2000 one? Uh, we hope we, you know, we hope soon. We got these two products into the market. We'd like to kind of see how they're trading and, you know, the the interest of the investors, people like yourselves, the retail community, um, the experts, and and you know, I, I think we'll get that feedback. We'll kind of see how it's going, and if there's interest and appetite, I mean, we're happy to deliver, we deliver what the masses want. We just started with the first two because those are kind of the you know the most traded and um, most familiar to people. But yeah, I mean, we would love to get it out at some point. Super, super interesting. I mean, it's super exciting. We're talking about approximately 60% yield here. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. This is going to be paid out monthly, right? Monthly yes. distribution. And um, are you guys planning on just paying out everything you earn or maybe uh, reinvesting some into the NAV? Do you guys, have you figured out a strategy on, on distribution policy yet or? Yeah, so I mean, the fund is actively managed. Um, uh -huh. So that you know Jay, Jay and team will you know reconcile essentially kind of the yield stable nav things like this and we'll ensure that we're paying out the most we possibly can to keep the ETF efficient running and and you know hopefully meet the targets that we're 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 looking to have and you know it can kind of go in different ways right if we're annualized at 60 percent then you'll kind of see consistent income payments perhaps if you have big months some of them might be bigger if you have a big gain to distribute at the end of the year, investors could potentially get a one-time gain, you know, so it'll, it'll really depend with these types of strategies. You kind of have to manage the income as you go along because we're getting it on a daily basis. So we'll have a little bit more foresight into, you know, how to trade the ETF most efficiently. Yeah. There'll be some fluctuation, right? You're not going to get the same monthly dividend. It, there's a lot of dependencies that go in. So first distribution, exactly. sorry to cut you off there. First distribution is actually going to be declared Friday. Yeah. But uh, in case, you know, because I'm already foreseeing this, question and this concern the these ETFs only came out in mid-September so right. is it safe to say that the first distribution is maybe going to be about half of what normally could yeah. be approximately it's safe to assume. yeah I mean it'll it, it'll I, I sort of can't you know pre-announce but it's safe to assume that you know we the ETF would have to adjust for the amount of time that it's actually been trading and in the market and whatnot so okay um, and then just keep in mind to investors, like you might have three stellar months of divs, three low months, and then four super outsized months. You know, it's 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 very much an actively managed product. And, you know, you're, again, trying to capture that 25 bips of time decay, but it's going to be 
um, you know, it, it's going to be a strategic decision at the end of each month in terms of like what was earned that particular month. Sylvia, Hopefully you want to overdo it, you know? Yeah, Hopefully yeah, uh, for, for sure. For sure. It is going to be variable. Uh, I'm assuming It'll it be can variable. be super consistent because the market is not consistent, right? right? So listen, I think you answered all my question. I am stoked. I'm super excited. I know a lot of people in my community are and Thanks. super excited to see the first distribution again, probably about half of what it normally could normally be, but you know, uh, but we'll definitely be following these closely. And um, I would love to have you back on maybe just to rediscuss and, and see how it goes. And we'll definitely keep a close eye on them. So thanks so much for your time, Sylvia. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for, you know, educating the masses out there. It's actually a great thing for us. We love seeing the information getting out. So it's good. Good stuff. We appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Thank you. Talk next Thank time. You. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII inner circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades. And Passive, I have half off for the Elite Membership. If you're interested in the Elite Membership, and even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of Passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama and there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.